Hey travelers, welcome back to another episode of Traveling Tips. I'm Michael, and this weekend we're exploring Seattle, Washington. This weekend, we're heading to the other Washington, Washington State that is, to experience the state's largest city, Seattle. Seattle is located in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States, along the banks of the Puget Sound. I'm here in early September, and the weather is just about as good as it gets. In this video, I'll share with you some of my picks for places to eat, neighborhoods to explore, and attractions to experience in the Emerald City on a three-day, two-night visit. This is not an exhaustive list, but it will hopefully give you some good ideas to get started on planning your trip to Seattle. You'll probably arrive by plane into SeaTac Airport. Instead of paying an outrageous rideshare fare, I'd suggest hopping on the Link light rail train. For $3.25 each way, you can take this reliable public transit from the station adjacent to the airport right to downtown. This train makes a few stops through suburban Seattle on its 40 minute journey to downtown. For this weekend getaway, I'm staying at the Westin Hotel, which is located near the West Lake Shopping District and Pike Place Market. This is an older hotel, which showed in the decor and the condition of the rooms, but the price was right and the location was unbeatable. I really enjoyed the view from my room on the 35th floor. It's a good hotel pick, but there are plenty of other major chain hotels nearby. After a morning of travel, you'll be really hungry. I'd recommend heading down the street to Pike Place Market to check out Seattle's number one tourist attraction and grab some lunch. I direct your first stop to be at Bleacher's Cheese on Pike Place. I had one of the best grilled cheese sandwiches and cups of tomato soup that I've ever had. While you're here, you can watch the cheesemakers hard at work, tending to the vats of liquid cheese. Recharged, it's time to explore the main market hall of Pike Place Market. Wandering through rows of flowers, produce, and fish vendors gives you a great idea why this is the top tourist destination in Seattle. You can check out my highlights of Pike Place Market in the video I'm linking here. Near Pike Place is the Seattle waterfront. This space has recently gained new life as the former Alaskan Way Freeway was dismantled creating an uninterrupted view from downtown to the Puget Sound. One of the great spots along the waterfront is the Olympic Sculpture Park. This is an outdoor extension of the Seattle Art Museum that opened in 2007. This nine acre sculpture garden is a great park to relax near the water and take in the skyline of downtown. The park gives out these bags with fun activities for kids to help explore and interact with the garden. Make sure to check it out while you're near the water. While at the waterfront, consider catching the Argosy Harbor Cruise for a water view of the Emerald City. The tour guide and captain take you around Elliott Bay and the Puget Sound to take in the Seattle skyline, the Port of Seattle, and the surrounding islands. At the time of this video, this one hour cruise costs $25 per adult passenger. There are restrooms plus a full service bar and concession counter on board too. When I went, I learned that sometimes you can see orca whales in the bay. Unfortunately, that was not the case on this trip. For dinner on your first night, consider entering the Spheres and dining at Wilmot's Ghost. Pizza you cut with scissors and classic cocktails are on the menu at this unique dining experience. The ambiance is so fantastic that you'll just have to order ice cream and coffee to extend the time in this trendy place. They have a sister bar around the corner if you want a craft cocktail for a nightcap. What a better way to start day two in this city that is known for coffee and donuts. To get your day started, head down the street from the Westlake District to Top Pot Donuts. 
The atmosphere of this store is cozy with indoor and outdoor seating. The friendly staff help you navigate all the choices in the display case. The box is pretty cool too. These are quite tasty. Definitely recommend. You can't come to the Seattle area without visiting the Museum of Flight. Seattle is known for being the home of Boeing airplane manufacturing. The museum is built adjacent to Boeing Field, south of downtown Seattle, and includes display areas in two buildings that are connected over a roadway by this long bridge. In the first building, a variety of smaller military and antique airplanes are on display. Across the bridge are the larger, more modern jet age aircraft. You can walk through one of the first Boeing 747s ever built. You can also walk down the aisle of one of the retired British Airways Concorde aircraft. And the prototype Boeing 787 Dreamliner. The first jet-aged Air Force One aircraft is on display here as well. Back in Seattle, I think it's time to get back on the water and escape to Bainbridge Island. To get there, we're taking the Washington State Ferry, which leaves from downtown Seattle and crosses the Puget Sound in 35 minutes to reach Bainbridge Island. The ferry reminds me a bit of the Staten Island Ferry in New York. As many as 200 cars and 2,500 people can fit aboard the ferry at a time. It costs about $9 to ride from Seattle to Bainbridge, but the return trip is free for walk-ons. The views from the deck of the ferry are fantastic. Midway through the crossing, it definitely got more cold and windy than it was closer to the shore. Crossing at night gives you a whole new perspective of downtown Seattle. Once on Bainbridge Island, you can explore the downtown Main Street. The small town vibe was very cozy with boutiques and coffee shops. Life moves much slower over here, and I think any of us could get used to that. You can go for some hikes too on the island and really get that sense of the Pacific Northwest. Back across the Puget Sound in Seattle, you can spend the evening exploring the Capitol Hill neighborhood. Near the gateway to Capitol Hill from downtown is the first ever Starbucks Reserve. This is no ordinary Starbucks. From special drinks to a wide assortment of food, the Starbucks Reserve is massive and amazing. You can try a sampler of different espressos and different fruity spritzer drinks like these. If you like Starbucks, you'll feel like you're in heaven here. Down the street is the heart of Capitol Hill. Cute shops and restaurants give this neighborhood a lot of charm. Stop into the Elliott Bay Book Company to browse the wide selection of books in a great space. After grabbing ice cream at Frankie and Joe's, check out Fogon Coquina Mexicana for dinner with great drinks and Mexican food. What a great way to end another great day in Seattle. The days on this weekend getaway just go so quickly. 
For the last day of this weekend getaway to Seattle, let's get started with Biscuits from Biscuit Bitch, a very popular breakfast spot with two locations near Pike Place Market. I talked a bit about the secret to ordering from this spot in my Pike Place Market video, so make sure to go check that out after this video. While in the neighborhood, I think now is a great time to drop by the original Starbucks to enjoy a morning Pike Place roast on Pike Place. You're probably wondering when I'm going to suggest seeing the Space Needle. Well, I've saved the Space Needle and Seattle Center for the last day of this weekend getaway. To get there, I think it's more fun hopping on the monorail, which connects downtown to the Seattle Center. This monorail was built for the 1962 World's Fair and travels about a mile and a half. It costs about $3 for a round trip ticket. The Space Needle is 605 feet tall and was also built specifically for the 1962 World's Fair. This is truly the most iconic and widely recognized symbol of the city. Ticket prices vary depending on the time of day that you go up and are most expensive midday. Near the base of the Space Needle are the Museum of Pop Culture and the Chihuly Museum. The Museum of Pop Culture building itself has some stunning architecture and interesting exhibits to Jimi Hendrix in the sci-fi and horror movie genres. The Chihuly Museum includes an indoor and outdoor portion displaying the spectacular, colorful, blown glass pieces. Tickets to these museums are each north of $35 per adult. They're both pretty small museums that you can get through in under an hour. For the ultimate view of the Seattle skyline, you need to head up Queen Anne's Hill to Cary Park. This park is often referred to as Postcard Park because of the view of the Space Needle and the rest of downtown. On clear days, you can even see Mount Rainier in the distance. It's quite a hike to get up the hill, so you may want to get a ride up if steep hills are a challenge. A short ride away is Gasworks Park. This park is at the north end of Lake Union. This park looks like a great place to picnic and enjoy a weekend afternoon. If you have time, you can rent a paddle boat and float around the lake. A couple blocks away is the Fremont Troll, which sits below the Aurora Bridge. You may recognize some of these landmarks from scenes in the movie 10 Things I Hate About You. If you're a fan of that movie, you'll want to head here for a picture. To finish off the last day in Seattle in a unique way, head to Flat Stick Pub near Pioneer Square for a unique bar experience where you can putt-putt golf around the bar. The holes spell out the word Seattle, which leads to a final hole beneath the Space Needle. There's some good beers on tap here as well. The weather at the end of the summer is fantastic since the days still have plenty of sunlight and the temperatures throughout the day stay warm. There are just so many things that are on the list that just cannot get done in one weekend. If you want to get out of downtown and go hiking in the Olympics or Mount Rainier Park, you will need a car. If you're just going to be staying near downtown like I did on my visit, I don't think a rental car would be worth the money. You can easily get around on public transit like the tram and the ferry or use rideshares. Seattle's a lot more hilly than I anticipated it being. As always, when visiting a big city, bring good shoes for doing lots of walking. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.